Alors, on est toujours chez Avid. Alors, on est passé du côté audio chez Pro Tools. On va, on va rencontrer Jill, qui est le Pro Audio Specialist chez euh, Avid. Alors, on va parler du nouveau feature de Pro Tools 11 qui a été annoncé cette semaine au NAB. Alors, on va voir avec lui les nouveautés. So. Hi, Jill. So, we've got a new version of Pro Tools, Pro Tools 11. Uh, you've been on a st steady schedule to release about a like, version a year from a couple of... Version yeah. every uh, year to 18 months right now. That's kind of our schedule as far as the big versions go. Last version, Pro Tools 10, we released in uh, October of 2011. So, yeah, we're on like a, a track to do like our big releases kind of right now. And just depends, around 18 months or so. Okay. And the last version, you get to unify all the version into like one release it was it became early pro tools 10 and then you had hardware around that is that That's right? correct yeah so pro tools 10 when we uh, did that release kind of unified everything like you said and uh around that same time we released our new dsp uh flagship product the hdx card uh, that replaced hd tdm and that's our new dsp solution And now we have a new version 11 with tons of new features. Uh, have you announced new hardware with that? Oh. Uh, no. Uh, well, we we have announced new hardware here at the show. Okay. Uh, don't actually have it here. It's for the more of the, the retail crowd. It's the uh, solo and the duo yeah. uh, fast track interfaces. So. Yeah, there are also like uh, iPad compatible. So yes, yeah. those those uh, actually have connections on the back, not only to connect to a Mac or a PC, but also they are iPad compliant and will be bus powered from the iPad. Oh, very nice. So now, sorry, back to the software. Okay. Yeah, uh, Pro Tools 11. So tons of new features. Uh, you play with new uh, things in the interface and new uh, things to work more efficiently and quicker and uh, to use more CPUs and everything. Right. So uh, what's about it? Well, so the big thing about it, it's been re-architectured kind of from the ground up. It's a, now a 64-bit application, meaning that we have the ability to address pretty much any RAM that you can throw at it. So where we had in the past, we had this limit of RAM that Pro Tools could address. You could only have so many clips on the timeline or in the actual session. You could only do so much with sample-based VIs and those type of things. Now that kind of that, the ceiling has kind of been taken away and you can basically use as much RAM as you need. Okay. And this is also going to be a big change for all the instruments that you can use? That's correct. So, uh, in fact, here at the show, a lot of uh, our developer partners really kind of came through for us, and, and we have 64-bit versions of those plugins uh, that have actually not even, some of them haven't even been in the AAX platform yet. So things like TuneTrack, Superior Drummer, or Easy Drummer, uh, Vienna Ensemble, or the Vienna Library uh, of Instruments, um, uh, Arturia's instruments. I mean, there's a lot of different VIs uh, that are now working, and you know, it's all beta right now, but they are working inside, and we are showing them here at the show, and being able to load really large instruments. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the sessions we have here on the stand has four superior drummers in it with almost three gigabytes of drums just for those for that one thing. So it's it's really... That's one hell of a, sna of a snare. <laughs> That's right. So it, it's, it's really exciting to be able to kind of see this uh, kind of progression and be able to, to offer our customers who've been looking for it for a long time to be able to use really big sample-based VIs inside of Pro Tools and 64-bit will it definitely gives you that ability. And uh, interfa interface-wise, uh, what are the big changes? Uh, well, okay, so interface-wise, um, for uh, we kind of redid uh, the mixer, the metering in the in the mixer uh, window. Uh, we've got about 30% more uh, throw on the fader and, 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 and scale in the actual meter itself. Uh, when you look at Pro Tools 10 and Pro Tools 11 side by side, I mean, the mixer in Pro Tools 10 looks fairly small up to this new taller meter, new taller fader. Um, on the H, um, why, why is that? Have you gone because now we have like bigger screen? Have you went with that well, or it's just, just? It's just it's a really to give you more accurate detail of your metering, and then for our HD customers, we've actually given them 17 different meter types. Really? So yeah, we've got different. Uh, PPM meters, we've got uh, linear, we've got VU, we've got K-scale metering now. We also have the ability to show on an HD system, you can turn on the ability to see gain reduction right there on the channel strip as well. So you don't have to go into a plug-in anymore to see what kind of gain reduction. And you have choices, you can either see just what the compressor's doing, just what a gate is doing, 
or you can actually combine all those things in any dynamics that's on that channel. It all combines together so you can see what kind of gain reduction you're getting overall, which is really, really cool. Um, and we also have the ability on a master fader to have a different meter type. So you might be wanting to look at your channel meters a certain way and your master output a different way. We have that ability as well. And I know you also work with the uh, MIDI Composer development team to integrate some technologies right. that, were in, that are in the MIDI Composer to enhance the, all the video capabilities of Pro Tools. Right, so previous in Pro Tools, we had the ability to play back a QuickTime as a video file, or if you had an older SD Avid Mojo or Mojo SDI, you could connect that up to some of our systems and be able to play Avid Media on the timeline out that, out that peripheral. What we've done now is we've basically taken the engine that runs Media Composer, the actual video engine, and it runs now in the background as Pro Tools Video Playout, so it's called the Avid Video Engine. And by doing this, we basically can play any type of HD media on the timeline, not a Pro Tools. So it could be QuickTime, it could be Avid DNX HD, MXFs, it could be Red, pretty much anything you can do in Media Composer as far as media goes. Can't play back unrendered effects, so you have to render your effects down into your video clips first, but then you export out as an AAF, we use the same media, and that is then played back uh, right off the Pro Tools timeline. In addition to that, we now have the ability to actually use Avid uh, DX hardware, the Nitrous DX, and the Mojo DX as playout for video from Pro Tools as well as all the Blackmagic products and now we can actually use AJA and this is both for Mac and PC. Oh, so yeah, very cool. Well, now with the 64-bit, I don't know if it's, if it's because of the 64-bit, but you've got like quicker bounce right. and stuff so, like that. Yeah, so that basically is built around our new Avid audio engine, which takes the place of our old DAE engine. So we've re-architected the, the engine from the ground up. No more DAE? No, no more DAE. It's, it's, uh, it's AAE now, Avid Audio Engine. So, uh, so what we've done is basically being able to uh, kind of re-architect the engine, giving you a lot more headroom. It, it does kind of come into play with the 64-bit the part of the app, but more behind the scenes on the engine. We're able to use now very well all the different cores and threads uh, from the processor now and it spreads that out evenly over those uh, processors so you're going to get a lot more processing power, a lot more efficient use of processing power because we also have what we call dynamic plug-in processing. And what that does is it only uses power from the host when it needs to. So as you're moving along your timeline, if it comes across, starts playing back audio on a track that has a lot of plugins, it'll use it, but then when it, it, it basically falls below a certain threshold and goes off where there's nothing there, then it basically, after a few seconds, will give that power back to the host. So it's very dynamic in how that works. Along with that, we also have a new, uh, basically low latency uh, domain switching for when you're in input. So basically, disk tracks that are just playing back are gonna run in a high domain a high latency domain all the time, just kind of fixed in the background. When you put a track, an audio track, and input a record, or you put an instrument track, like you're going to play a MIDI uh, VI instrument, it basically will then place that into a low latency buffer that you set in the playback engine. So it allows you to really have that buffer crank down a lot all the time without having to switch your buffer around when you want to record things. And that's when it only goes into the low latency mode. So it's, it's very intelligent how that works. Now, to kind of get back to your original question, by doing this new engine, we now have the ability to do faster than real-time bounce, or what we call an offline bounce. And what's really unique about that and is that uh, you can use our old bounce to disk uh, menu command, but you can also now right-click on any output or send path to invoke that as well. Uh, gives you the ability to uh, append a particular name. It comes preset with the session name and then it will then append to the whatever your bounce is, the name of the track that you're, or the bus that you're bouncing from. Now, along with that, we now have the ability, uh, we're actually adding the ability to do multiple bounces at once faster than real time. So you can go in and say, on a post project, for instance, you might want to bounce your, your dialogue stems, your music stems, your effect stems, and your print master all at one time. You can actually set that up to do all those buses at once faster than real time, and very, very big time saver. The, the faster than real-time bounce uh, is available in every version of Pro Tools. The multiple paths uh, faster than real-time bounce is only available in Pro Tools HD. Okay. So, and anything else that we have to look around in Pro Tools well, that we can... Well, there's, there's other little, cool little workflow features, being able to use uh, uh, 
key commands to bypass like any compressor in the session, any dynamics plug in the session. You can uh, hold down a modifier key and bypass a chain of plugins or at a specific point with it after uh, plugins on a, on a track uh, sends as well. Uh, we have the ability now to uh, see uh, gain reduction and then sin level in the state plate when you're looking at the mixer, as well as being able to see the little mini fader view and sins on more than just one sin per five sets. So you can actually see all 10 sins now and that mini fader view kind of giving you a, a what I like to call a sin matrix. Well, Jill, this is nice release. Congratulations. And, uh, we're, uh, when are we going to see? When are, are we going to be able to uh, buy it? We are hoping. Uh, well, so right now, uh, anybody that purchases Pro Tools, uh, Pro Tools HD system or Pro Tools 10 after uh, April 7th, which was this past Sunday, will get Pro Tools 11 for free when it comes out. And uh, basically, uh, then once it does come out, it'll be Pro Tools 11. You'll actually get a dual auth. Uh, you get both 10 and 11. And that's another big thing is Pro Tools 11 will co-install with Pro Tools 10, 10 10.3.5 on the same system. So if you're working on a project in 11, you, some of your plugins might not be quite ready for the new system. You can quit, boot up into Pro Tools 10, work some, do your work, maybe uh, save that, then you can go back to 11. It's going to make for a softer transition. That's that's the idea, make for a much, much easier transition. Yeah. So uh, we're hoping to have this out by the end of Q2. Cool. And what's the, is it for price, price point, uh, price point wise, what, did you, do you have prices yet or? Oh yeah, so, well, Pro Tools, Pro Tools 11 standalone is $699 US like it, like, it, like Pro Tools 10 was. Um, upgrading from Pro Tools 10 to 11 is 299 upgrading from 9 back to 11 is 399 the US prices. Uh, empowered, I believe Empowered and Pro Tools Express to 11 is 499 US. And then the Pro Tools HD 10 to HD 11 is 599 Pro Tools 9 HD to 11 HD is 999 so We got an incentive for everybody now, so, uh, um, well, Jill. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you for a uh, great demo, and uh, we'll see that online soon, I All guess. Right. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.